is Focus with Jack Cottle. Good evening, I'm Jack Cottle. Welcome to this month's edition of Focus. This month we're talking about racial reconciliation here in Rapid City. Two guests with us to talk about that. Tim Gallego is the editor emeritus and former publisher of the Native Sun News, also formerly of the Lakota Times here in the area. Steve Allender, former Rapid City police chief and Rapid City's new mayor-elect. He will take that office on Monday. A little history. First of all, Tim Gallego was a major driving force behind the first year of, re year of reconciliation here in South Dakota. That happened within Governor George Mickelson back in 1990. And that was to honor the victims of the Wounded Knee Massacre and also to work toward reconciliation among all citizens here in the state. Now, 25 years later, last month, current Mayor Sam Coiker and Steve Allender signed a mayoral proclamation declaring 2015 as a renewed year of reconciliation. Going to go back in history a little bit with you first, Tim. What was it back there some 25 years ago or 35 years ago now that made you guys sit down and decide this is something we need to do. Well, you know, uh, there was a ride that followed the exact trail of uh, Chief Bigfoot's band that approached Wounded Knee back in December 29th, 1890. And they would make that ride to the gravesite, the mass gravesite. All of the riders would get down, they'd pray, they'd pray for peace, and believe it or not, they'd pay for reconciliation. And I thought, well, that's a grand gesture that we should be doing across this whole state. So I wrote an editorial and asked Governor George Mickelson to take a look at what they're doing down there and let's uh, honor those people that died 100 years ago. It was the 100th anniversary, wasn't it? And let's look at a year of reconciliation. We kind of kicked around what word we would use. We finally came up with reconciliation. So how much work? went into this thing from your first idea to this finally getting done in Pierre? Well, uh, well, you have a strong governor who I think it was, it was a risk for him. I mean, he took a lot of courage for him in the state of South Dakota to, to, to try to proclaim something. We had two things going. We also asked him if he would uh, do away with Columbus Day and declare uh, Native American Day in South Dakota. So we had those two things going, and the state legislators in 1990 passed them both. So that was a, really a major coup for us. What was the racial climate here in South Dakota back in 1990? Probably a little worse than it is now. I've seen a lot of improvements in those 25 years, but uh, I think a lot of it just comes about from not understanding, not understanding each other. Because we have conflicts on both sides, and uh, it's not just uh, we have whites with problems with Indians. We have Indians that have problems with whites also. So. Uh, now Steve, you were with the police force in Rapid City back at that time. What are your memories of the racial climate uh, back in that time? Well, it's always been tense, and, and uh, with police and citizen interaction, there's always the opportunity in Rapid City for natives to uh, become involved in the criminal justice system and uh, almost, let's face it, almost all of the police officers in Rapid City uh, have been and are currently uh, white. And so that uh, is a very, those are very emotional contacts. And uh, so from my perspective, it was always uh, probably, my perspective was always a little worse than it probably was in reality. Uh, but it's, it's always been tense. And did you see at that point that something needed to change? What did you see that was happening then that maybe needed to evolve, maybe needed to get better? Well, I felt, uh, as uh, Mr. Gallego has mentioned, that there was, uh, there was a level of misunderstanding and therefore a, a, a lack of respect from both sides. And it didn't matter uh, how polite or how rude or uh, uh, whatever uh, that that I was on the job or that uh, other officers were, there was always this anger and an expectation of inappropriate behavior or uh, discriminatory behavior. So uh, it was very, very difficult to have a genuine uh, understanding or a conversation back in those days. Has it changed? What, what progress have we made in those 35 years? Well, that's a question for someone, uh, for probably a social scientist, but uh, from my uh, perspective, what's changed is we've, uh, our older generations are getting a little older. The, the more entrenched uh, thinkers uh, on the subject are uh, uh, leaving us, or there's, there's newer, newer generations, younger minds at the table now, 
And I think that breathes a lot of uh, uh, hope into this whole discussion. Tim, what changes have you seen from 1990 to today? <laughs> I think there's really been some big changes. An example, uh, 1972, we had the flood in June. And a lot of the Native Americans in Rapid City lived along Rapid Creek. They had Oshkosh Village, they used to call it, an Indian camp. And so a lot of the Indians got hit really hard with that flood. And so Mayor Barnett, Don Barnett, asked that all the hotels and motels in Rapid City take in and give rooms to, to the people that were flooded out. Some of the hotels absolutely refused to take Native Americans. And uh, he stood up for them and he fought for it and says, you're, you're going to have business in this Rapid City. You're going to have to do what, what we're trying to do for humanity's sake. So that's how bad it was back then. And uh, I'm sure that wouldn't happen today. Uh, what was your thoughts when you heard Mayor Barnett stand up and do that? You say, look, this is what you're going to do? Well, he did more than that. We were, this city was on the verge in 1973 and early 1973 of really having some race riots. The American Indian Movement was here in town. They were getting ready at that time to go down and take over the Hamlet of Wounded Knee. And uh, so there was tension in Rapid City it was just to the boiling point. The mayor called the chief of police and the Pennington County, head of the Pennington County Sheriff's, church ministers, and brought together with Dennis Banks, Russell Means, a lot of the, the real militant Native Americans. They sat down and they talked. It calmed down, and the violence that we thought was going to hit Rapid City never happened. But it took a really strong mayor, and I think a lot of support from the Rapid City Police Department and the, and the Sheriff's Department and the churches to really bring that to a very calm conclusion. You know, there have been some incidents here over the last year or so where some of that racial tension has, has built up again. Is it comparable to what you saw back then, or where is that level here right now? Well, I think more, most of the things we see happening now are more individualized than we saw back then, where it was a whole group of people involved. Uh, the instances we do see usually involves one or two individuals doing something. And we've had incidents uh, like this uh, gentleman named Tiger and his, his uh, con confrontation with two, three Rapid City police officers in, in which he killed two of them. And uh, that didn't sit too well in the Indian community either. So, uh, Steve, as you look at some of those tensions that have built up, some of the incidents that have happened, does that bring back some of the old things or where do you see that, that tension level these days? Well, what I, this took me a long time to learn, but what I've learned that from the larger Native community, there's a, uh, when there's a public clash between um, Natives and non-Natives in Rapid City, the larger Native community uh, feels that they're being sometimes misrepresented by uh, certain folks on the picket line or uh, the, the loudest of the self-appointed uh, representatives uh, who are Native American. And so... Um, I think there's a greater understanding from all people in Rapid City about what the facts are and what the, uh, what the allegations are and that they're not always the same thing. Uh, so so um, I think people, though, are kind of growing weary of this same, same old discussion and uh, discussions that mirror the bigger cities in America, Baltimore and Philadelphia and so on. Do you, feel the same, do you feel that same way, that, that sometimes some of the louder voices drown out what may be the, the larger voice underneath? It's been that way for a long time. I mean, uh, even the media at times find their own spokespeople that mm. are, I think, uh, are a little too far in one direction or the other, and they actually become spokesmen for, the, for all of us, and uh, that's, that's not necessarily so. Uh, We've got quiet voices out there that are doing things and accomplishing things. We've got a lot of people out here in Rapid City that are working and, and holding down good jobs. And then you see the, the, the few that are out there uh, making spectacles themselves, uh, drinking and causing problems and getting in automobile accidents and things like that. And it reflects on all of us. And, and, and that's been the case for a long time. All right, what progress do we still need to make? We'll take a look at that when we come back with this month's edition of Focus. 
I'm Jack Cottle. Welcome back to this month's edition of Focus. 2015 has been declared a renewed year of reconciliation here in Rapid City. Steve Allender is Rapid City's mayor-elect. He will take over that office on Monday. We talked a little bit ago about some of the progress that we made. What progress still has to be made? Where do we need to still improve in all of this? Well, um, with the new resolu resolution uh, renewing the year of reconciliation, I'm excited about this because um, everyone can get behind reconciliation. It doesn't point fingers, it doesn't cast blame, uh, uh, it doesn't ask for anything other than a, uh, a hand across the table. So uh, one of the things we have to do is continue to teach ourselves how to talk. We've got to get people in the conversation that can help make things better and be a better example for our younger generations. So someone asked me the other day, what good is the resolution? It's just words. And that's true at this point, it's just words, and it's our duty uh, in this community to make it more valuable than just words. We have to turn it into actions, and we have to turn it into a reflection of who we are as a community and how we choose to uh, cooperate and get along as one people. Uh, Tim Gallego is the editor emeritus and former publisher of the Native Sun News. Uh, Tim, where do we still need to go forward here in all of this? You know, we have uh, some major events in Rapid City, uh, which Native Americans are the largest participants. We have the Lakota Nation Invitational Basketball Tournament. We've got the Black Hills Powell. And uh, Daphne Richards is working very hard to get uh, the Powell grounds established here in this town, which would be, I think, a great tourist attraction. But I think these events, we should, it, it, it gives the Native Americans an opportunity to do what the chief just said, or with the, the mayor, I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you reach across the aisle, let's invite the people to come down to the power, be a part of it, learn, learn about what our culture is, learn about what we're doing, learn about our songs, our dance. And uh, we, we usually draw a large crowd of, of non-natives to the L&I tournament because we have a great team that comes down from Custer with uh, the, the old coach, uh, Larry Lugens, who had the courage back in the early days when everybody's afraid to even go out on the reservation of taking his team out and playing out in Pine Ridge, of taking his team and putting it into what used to be called the All Indian Tournament, the first white team that went there. And it draws a lot of people from Custer, from Hill City, and from the, the non-Indian community to the games. We all love basketball. It's a commonality that we have and we all share as a people. Who's easier to change the mindset of, the young people or the old people, to get them on board? Well, I think it's going to take the young people. Um, I've been at it now for a long, long time and made some inroads. And uh, it takes, I think, a lot of sacrifice on the part of some of our elders that need, need to step up and need to be examples for, for our children also. I think it's probably the same in the non-Indian non community. That, it's going to take a combination of the elders, but mostly it's going to be the young people that have to carry the load for us from now on. Uh, Steve, from the city's perspective, who do you go after? The older people, the younger people, group in the middle? Well, I think certainly we have to go after everyone. We have to, we have to create an example of acceptance and tolerance and, and oneness within this community. And it sounds kind of corny, but this, is the, these, this has to be the goal. But uh, what's always haunted me is that there's a, there are small children today from the Indian and, and non-Indian community that are learning how to think about each other. They're being taught by uh, bad examples. And so we have to start from you know, preschool on up to grandmas and grandpas and, and make sure we're sending a consistent message and, and uh, trying to work through this together. Now, one of the big things that I think has changed since 1990 is social media. Uh, everybody has an instant often anonymous voice to throw out whatever they throw out. I'm amazed sometimes I'll put a story on our Facebook page and amazed at how quickly it turns into a racial battle. Even a story that has no racial component to it at all. How do you combat that with all of that stuff flying around, often ugly, ugly stuff from both sides? Well, I'm not, I'm not a real a fan of Facebook or any of the new stuff. So. I Old timers like me, we're just not in that game yet. So I hear from my employees, they see a lot of things on Facebook that, that are really bad. And uh, I think you have to just sit down and start considering the people that are doing it, that uh, they're not really worth 
uh, going after or, or the, the, they're just going to be there. They're going to, you know, the Rapid City, we have to face reconciliation as something that's strong and something that's positive. And I think that overrides social media could be a lot of help to us. It could come in and start showing some really positive things that need to be. And uh, when we hear people tell a dirty joke or a bad joke about either whites or Indians, you need to stop them right there and say that's not right. And uh, we're not doing that. We need to reach that point. Now, Steve, you've always been heavily involved in social media with your Facebook, uh, your Twitter. Uh, how do you look at some of the stuff? Because you see things turn ugly quickly, and they, they go every direction imaginable. Well, Facebook and other social media platforms are great for a number of reasons, but one of those reasons is not to properly converse about emotional issues. Whatever the emotional issue is always goes bad on social media. Unfortunately, too many people put too much stock in what's said on social media. It doesn't require to, uh, a reference, doesn't have to be the truth, but uh, rumors are spread there uh, literally at the speed of light. And so in that respect, social media is bad for uh, the emotional issue of race relations and, and reconciliation. Now, uh, the city, uh, you and Mayor, Corker, Mayor, Mayor Quaker, are, uh, have issued this new proclamation. What's the city's role in making all of this happen? I think the, city, uh, the city's role is to help set the expectation, to help set the example, and to encourage uh, uh, equality and fairness, and to, uh, to, to demonstrate that we can provide government services to one community, regardless of who they are, what they look like, where they come from, and uh, that's a basic government responsibility. And so we will help facilitate. I don't think you should trust the politician who wants to lead the charge and do something great because you have to question what the motive is there. I mean, you know, I, even I say that. But uh, uh, so the the community leaders who cannot be politically influenced need to be at the forefront of this argument, and the city and other. Uh, uh, organizations in town have to support it. Tim, does the media play a role in making all this happen? Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, social, you talk about the social media, but we need to start doing it realistically as human beings. If we have social events, let's invite non-Indians to it. Or if in the community, let's invite Indians to some of the social activities. Let's sit down and get to know each other. And uh, I think that's socializing in the real sense. All right, we'll continue our look at reconciliation here in Rapid City when we come back with this month's edition of Focus. I'm Jack Cattle. Welcome back to this month's edition of Focus. We're talking about reconciliation here in Rapid City. Tim Gallego is the editor emeritus and former publisher of the Native Sun News here in Rapid City. Tim, uh, you've always been very involved in the Native American Journalists Association. You talk to people from other parts of the country. Are the issues that we have unique to here, or are these things that we're seeing in other communities around the country? Well, we still have problems, I think, a, a lot in the West. Uh, Browning, Montana, the, Gallup, New Mexico, Farmington. But I think some of the issues are just a little bit different than what we have right here in Rapid City. And as Steve was saying, that we have a local issue here, and we have the, the power to change it locally. You see things happening, and you know that there's some thoughts that are a little racist when you want to change the name of, of a, a mountain, Harney Peak, and you want to change it to Black Elk Peak or Hihan Kanga. And you see some of the things in the paper that are totally against it. And I remind my readers that everything had a name long before the white settlers ever got here. Every lake, every river, every mountain, even rocks had names. They came along and changed the names. So the suggestion that maybe Harney Peak should be changed to, and I would, I would stand up for Black Elk Peak because he was a, a human being, he was well-respected Lakota holy man. And I, I would see that better than uh, Hinangakara, which is probably be very hard uh, to pronounce. So, but I, that's the kind of thing that's happening here that you see some of the hard feelings coming out that I, I think need to be pushed aside. And Steve Allender, uh, former Rapid City Police Chief, and uh, will be Rapid City's new mayor on Monday. Uh, through the years, I'm sure you've dealt with police departments from all over the country. Mm -hmm. 
What do you see from them that you can bring back here that as far as racial situations, dealing with them, how not to deal with them? Well, a few years ago I sat on a panel uh, put together by the International Association of Chiefs of Police to address this very issue of uh, ad addressing uh, racial problems and tension in our communities. And there, I think there are plenty of examples of communities that are doing things right for their communities, plenty of examples of uh, departments and cities doing things wrong. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, I firmly believe that the beauty in this and, and the, 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 the gem that we have to focus on here is that this is local. We don't have to pay attention to uh, international problems. We don't have to pay attention to bad examples or even good examples because we're a unique community and we have a unique energy here. And we get to decide. All of the people of this community, red, white, black, yellow, whatever, have the ability to decide how we want to be governed, how we want to participate, and what the ultimate outcome should be. And uh, that's very exciting to me. So how do you win over, you've got the ones in the middle, you probably, but the ones on the far sides, how do you win them over? How do you bring them into the fold? So, uh, the fringe, uh, to some extent, is going to have to be forgotten and left behind. Uh, th there's there's uh, a point when the losses have to be cut and we have to focus on the greater good, which is reconciliation and which is uh, making Rapid City our hometown uh, for all of us. And... Um, uh, we're not going to be able to satisfy everyone, and we shouldn't be held back by uh, trying to do that. Uh, and Tim, I'm sure you agree that there are those people that are they're not going to want to change no matter what. What do you do well, with a group know, like I'm, that? I'm very proud of Steve Ellender and, and uh, Sam Quirker for even taking the step to even consider a, a renewed year of reconciliation. I mean, we try, tried it 25 years ago, and... I don't think we had the media support and a lot of the public support to get it done. And I, I see no reason why we can't do it this time. I think the attitudes are different. I think people are more open to it. I think people see the problems that exist here in South Dakota. Rabbit City could be one of the greatest cities in the United States, except for that one little problem. South Dakota could be one of the greatest states, except for that one little problem. And uh, it can be solved. Uh, no, I talked to you over the years that you mentioned that same thing, that, that it kind of came to the forefront, and then it would fade away, and then it would rise up for a little bit and fade away. How do you keep it on the upside for a while? With people like our new mayor, with, uh, with I new ideas, with bringing people together, I think that's the only way we're going to do it. Uh, Steve, how do you keep this going? Because it's easy to sit and talk about it and, and come up with great ideas, but how do you actually keep this in the forefront, keep people energized about it for a while? Well, I'll tell you, Jack, there's, there's no time to uh, sit around and hope this problem solves itself. This is going to require action. It's going to require a community effort. And it has to be so obvious to everyone uh, that everyone feels compelled to either be a part of it or to uh, go hide under a rock. This is, uh, this is our Rapid City. When I say it's our Rapid City, it's, it's everyone who lives here. Uh, it belongs to us, and, uh, and so it has to be an obvious, uh, uh, very public effort. All right. So you have your work cut out for you starting on Monday. Steve Absolutely. Steve will take over as mayor. We are out of time. Uh, Tim Gallego with the Native Sun News. Thank you for coming. Steve Allender, former police chief and mayor, to be coming up uh, starting on Monday. And that will do it for us. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again the first Sunday night of next month. Good night.